is the painful reality Jamaica has endured for centuries. Our treasures, our history have been scattered across the globe. But today, we're standing up to reclaim what's rightfully ours. This is the tale of pieces of Jamaica's stolen heritage and our unwavering fight to bring them home. Jamaica, like many countries worldwide, is fighting for the return of artifacts stolen by foreigners. This isn't just about old relics gathering dust in museums. It's about reclaiming our identity, our history, and our rightful place in the world. It's about reconnecting with our roots and preserving our cultural legacy for future generations. The return of these artifacts is not just a matter of pride, but a crucial step in preserving our cultural heritage. Jamaica's Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Miss Olivia Grange, has been a beacon of hope in this fight. She's made it clear, Jamaica is lobbying hard for the return of our Taino artifacts and other stolen treasures. Her unwavering efforts represent a growing movement across the Caribbean and beyond as nations unite to reclaim what was taken during centuries of colonialism and exploitation. Her work gives us hope and inspiration for the future. Let's talk about some of what has been taken from us. Number 1. Taino Artifacts It's a story of injustice that echoes through the centuries. Pottery and tools, wooden carvings of a birdman deity, and Boina Yell, the rain god, were taken from us. These aren't just pretty statues. They're a direct link to the indigenous people of Jamaica, the Tainos. Found in a cave in 1792, they ended up in the British Museum before we even had a say in the matter. These carvings are more than art. They're a window into the spiritual beliefs and cultural practices of the people who first called our island home. Number 2. The Tacky's Rebellion Bible This isn't just any old book. It's the Tacky's Rebellion Bible, a sacred relic that belonged to Tacky, the leader of a major slave uprising in 1760. The British took it as a trophy, a symbol of their victory. But for us, it's a symbol of our fight for freedom sitting in a church archive in the UK. This Bible represents the courage and resilience of our ancestors who dared to challenge the brutal system of slavery. Its return would be a powerful affirmation of our history and our struggle. Number 3. Natural History Specimens European collectors swooped in during the 18th and 19th centuries, grabbing everything from our unique plants to our animals, Ever heard of the giant galley wasp? It's a lizard that used to be found only in Jamaica. Now, you're more likely to see it in a European museum than in our forests. These specimens aren't just scientific curiosities. They're part of Jamaica's unique biodiversity, our natural heritage. Each of these items tells a part of our story. Without them, it's like trying to read a book with pages torn out. They're not just objects. They're pieces of our collective memory, reminders of where we've come from and what we've overcome. So what are we doing about it? Well, we're not sitting around waiting for handouts. Repatriation, that's the fancy word for getting our stuff back. It is about more than just objects. It's about restoring our cultural identity and righting historical wrongs. It's about acknowledging the pain of the past and working towards a future where all cultures are respected and valued. Our government isn't taking this lying down. They're pushing hard, using every legal and diplomatic tool at their disposal. They're engaging in negotiations, raising awareness on international platforms, and building alliances with other countries facing similar challenges. And we're not alone in this fight. Organizations like UNESCO and the International Council of Museums are backing us up, providing guidelines and support for the ethical return of cultural property. Other countries are showing it can be done. Nigeria is getting back the Benin bronzes with museums in Germany, the UK and the US agreeing to return these looted artifacts. Ghana just got back some royal artifacts that were taken during colonial times. Cambodia and India have seen stolen statues returned, with the U.S. playing a key role in facilitating these returns. Even Greece is making noise about the Parthenon marbles, putting pressure on the British Museum 
to return them. These success stories give us hope. They show that the tide is turning and that there's a growing recognition of the importance of cultural heritage to the identity and well-being of communities around the world. We've had some wins. Some stolen items have been returned. The Maroon Peace Treaties? They're back home where they belong, returned in 2014 after lengthy negotiations. These documents, signed in 1739 and 1740, marked a truce between the British and the Maroons, communities of escaped slaves who fought for their freedom. For years, these crucial pieces of our history were kept away from us. These treaties aren't just pieces of paper. They're proof of our ancestors' determination to live free, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Paul Bogle's whip returned in 2019. Bogle, now a national hero, led the Morant Bay Rebellion in 1865. His whip isn't just a tool, it's a symbol of resistance against oppression. It reminds us of the price our forebears paid in the struggle for justice and equality. Sam Sharp's sword returned in 2018. Another national hero, Sam Sharp, led the Christmas Rebellion of 1831. His sword represents our ongoing fight for justice and equality. It's a tangible link to a man who dared to dream of freedom in a time of chains. These returns aren't just about getting objects back. They're about reclaiming our narrative, telling our story in our own words. But let's be real. We're still facing some big challenges. Some of our treasures are hard to track down, lost in the labyrinth of private collections and museum storerooms. Some museums are dragging their feet, hiding behind outdated laws and colonial-era attitudes. And the legal hoops we have to jump through? It's like trying to navigate an obstacle course blindfolded. There's also the question of conservation. Once we get our artifacts back, we need to ensure we have the facilities and expertise to preserve them properly. It's not just about getting them back, it's about keeping them safe for future generations. This fight isn't over, not by a long shot. Our history, our culture, they're not for sale. They're our birthright. And we're going to keep pushing until every last piece comes home. We're not just fighting for objects. We're fighting for recognition, for respect, for the right to tell our own story. We're fighting to heal the wounds of the past and build a more equitable future. So, what can you do? Stay informed, sign petitions, make some noise, let the world know that Jamaica wants its treasures back. Share our story on social media, write to your representatives, support local museums and cultural institutions that are working to preserve our heritage. Because these aren't just artifacts, they're pieces of us. They're the tangible links to our ancestors, to the struggles and triumphs that have shaped our nation. And it's high time they came home. Remember, Every voice counts in this fight. Our ancestors fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for our heritage. Let's bring our treasures home where they belong. Let's reclaim our past to secure our future. Together, we can ensure that Jamaica's rich cultural tapestry is preserved, celebrated, and passed on to future generations. This is more than a fight for old relics. It's a fight for justice, for identity, for the right to own our narrative. So let's stand together, raise our voices, and bring our treasures back to Jamaica, the land we love. Where's this one from? The Bobo Ashanti tribe, present day Ghana, 19th century. Well, and what about this one? That one's from the Edo people of Benin, 16th century. Tell me about this one. Also from Benin, 7th century, Fula tribe, I believe. Nah. I beg your pardon. It was taken by British soldiers in Benin, but it's from Wakanda, and it's made out of vibranium. Don't trip. I'm going to take it off your hands for you. These items aren't for sale. How do you think your ancestors got these? 
you think they paid a fair price? Or did they take it like they took everything else? A lot of countries have been asking the UK to give back their stolen artifacts, pay reparations, and it's been it's been um <laughs> it's been a major bone in the throat of the Queen. <laughs> And we're going to get into all that today. We're going to also read comments from people in the comment section talking about how the UK is doing them a favor by preserving the um, precious artifacts. Um, talking about how where they didn't even know the value of the things they had and stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> like the audacity. You can imagine that nonsense. <laughs> Oh my god. But before we dive deep into today's topic, I want to introduce something to you guys. I understand how it is when you're running a small business. So I want to use my platform to help small businesses. I'm thinking of a situation where I help promote one or two businesses every month. So if you have a small business and this is something you're interested in, you can send me an email or a DM on Instagram. And I want to add that before I choose the business I'm going to be putting on here, you are going to show me proof and authentify your business because I don't want a situation where my good is going to come bite me in the butt because scammers are reaching out to me and scamming people. Humans, I know we have a way of making everything good, bad in this world, but I know we are good people on here, right? Please, please, let's be good people, please. <laughs> For the sake of God, I'm going to try this for three months and see how it goes. So we have October, November, December. When I'm sure for these three months that everything goes as planned and this is being used for good and not evil and bad and scamming people, then we're going to continue with the process. Please know that this is free and for only small businesses. Thank you. So kicking off with this idea today, I'm going to be promoting an ebook titled Five Steps to Overcoming a Thought written by our beautiful sister here on the channel, Evora Bentley. She sent me this ebook and I'm like, God, I really needed this. I like it was it was so powerful. It was so direct. I felt like she was talking to me directly and you really need to read this because trust me, there is we've all had those thoughts that we, we really need to overcome. There's a lot of those stuff going on. So you guys really need to check out this book. Like it's, it's powerful. So I'm going to leave everything down below in the description. You have to subscribe to her website. So you are um, automatically qualified to one of the ebook when you subscribe. So links to everything you need to know about her is going to be in the description and also link to the website to subscribe and then you get a copy automatically. So please do check her out. And thank you very much, Ivora Bentley, for sending me this book. I really appreciate it. Guys, do well to check it out. You are not going to regret it. Earlier, I spoke to the Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, and I began by asking him whether he thought the stolen Benin bronzes should be owned by Nigeria. Well, I think that they properly reside in the British Museum. Now what does that even mean? They properly reside in the British Museum? Because I believe they were properly residing just fine where you stole them from. Just fine. They were in good state when you took them. That was why you were able to use them. Meaning they were kept just fine. Because if they were in shambles and not properly residing, you would not have seen anything good to take to your idea of where somewhere perfect is for their residing location. You, you get what I mean, you get what I mean. British Museum. Now that doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't work uh, with the, the government in Nigeria uh, to see how we can um, for, for, share for, it with them. For, for, forgive me, yeah. and I understand um, sharing, but they were stolen. Do you not think that they should be owned by the people that they were stolen from in the first place? Well, I think the, the problem with this, and of course, um, if we go back to things that happened in the, the, the 19th century mm. and judge them by uh, our values of today, it's completely uh, unacceptable. But uh, my concern about this is, where do you actually draw the, the, the line with this? You draw the line from the point where you were never supposed to steal them. That's why you draw the line, the line that thou shalt not steal. The collections of our great national institutions have been developed over many, many centuries, in many times in uh, questionable uh, circumstances. I think the question now is about what we do with these. Mm. I love the Benin uh, bronzes. I've seen them many times throughout my life. And I think them being in the British Museum uh, which is a world repository of heritage allows people to see it but look, that doesn't stop Understood. us from, oh, from, uh, from sharing it okay but ownership is key right yeah. and the nigerians say the nigerians say that 
if when they get them back they would almost certainly be happy to loan them back to you but the fundamental problem is that they were stolen from the Nigerians and they want to own them. I completely accept that they were acquired at a time of... Um... They were acquired. What, what does that mean, they were acquired? You mean they were stolen? <laughs> acquired. The semantics. <laughs> Abi, have we redefined acquired and now it means stolen? Can somebody check the dictionary? Rampant... Uh... Uh, colonial expansion in, um, in in Africa in circumstances that I'm not in any way going to sort of uh, defend or condemn with the values of the, the, the 21st century. I think though the more important question is uh, how we ensure that the world can uh, enjoy this, this marvellous heritage. A letter will soon be sent, mandated under international law by the Nigerian government to the British Museum, formally requesting return. You and I know that that would also require uh, laws, the Heritage Act and the British Museum Act, to be revoked or at least amended. Is that a realistic prospect? Uh, no, we have no plans uh, for, for doing that. <laughs> we know you have no plans of doing that. <laughs> like, you never have plans for doing anything that is in any other person's favor and interest but yours. We already knew this, but, but still, we want it back anyways. I didn't know how much they've taken from people. Like, it's insane how much they've taken from people, like, in Africa, in India. Um, other countries are coming out. I started seeing other countries talking about what they've taken from them in, in, in their countries as well. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is this not like a massive um, stealing spree going on here? <laughs> I do believe the world can enjoy these marvelous artifacts and precious... We all know that some of our very, very precious minerals, artifacts, were stolen from Africa and in the Caribbean. Now, these people went ahead after stealing everything and started decolonizing, started neocolonialism in our countries. Now, look at the state of our countries right now. We do not have minerals, while UK, Britain, has minerals, has gold, one of the biggest gold reservers in the world. Where does UK um, mine its gold? Where does UK get its minerals? We know UK has no minerals. And why do they have them right now? It's because they're exposing them after 100 to year, 200 years after exploitation of our countries, after exploitation of our own mineral resources now let's say for example we've seen us uh, claiming to have a coal and all these minerals that they are very very important to the economy now where does us mi mine its minerals it does not have gold reserves it doesn't have any gold mines in their countries but they own a lot of gold now look at britain the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, took almost everything in the colonies. Now, go look at the state of East and um, Central Africa. Now, look at the state of Southern part of Africa. Very rich indeed. Petroleum, gold, coal, diamond, platinum, all those mineral resources but what happened they have never benefited from all those the people in those countries still starve people in those countries still lack employment the people in those country still live in poverty but their country is very rich god in fact blessed africa he blessed the caribbean now look at the caribbean they've stolen their beach beaches they have stolen their artifacts these artifacts are being kept um, in London and some of them in um, where Boston, I think Boston, and some of them are being kept um, in the palace, in the king's palace, now in Scotland. Now, 
this is the evil we are talking about this is whatever we are condemning as the people of black descent we are saying no to neocolonialism right now because they are still continuing the exploitation our leaders have gone to bed with them they never speak anything after being given millions of money now britain owns around 12.8 billion dollars to jamaica for the artifacts and the beaches they stole from them but they have a prime minister who has never spoken about all these things but when i speak about them jamaicans comes after jamaica will always come after me they say how much i'm interfering i'm meddling into their affairs how much i should concentrate with africa of course i'm concentrating with africa of course i'm talking about the evil they committed to us now go look at my youtube channel have always been speaking truth to power that's whatever we've been lacking all this while and they love it when we fight against ourselves when black people fight against themselves that's whatever they like it that's how they love it now see uh the throne where uh, the queen elizabeth used to sit is made up of gold gold and diamond but they have no gold now go look at south africa they took everything now they've taken everything from jamaica they took everything from kenya they took everything from tanzania uganda now look at these countries now they exploit they are exploiting west africa look at france how it's meddling in the affairs of west africa now it's west africa where we have a lot of petroleum products but they have always meddled and see how much they fight well they are taking everything that belongs to them that's why i always give out a shout out to one and only ibrahim traore has come out and is now defending his country this is whatever we need we need patriotism we need people will be loyal to our countries we need people will speak truth to power this is the time and i'm giving out a shout out to evie anita she did this video she discussed it and i'm now repeating we will speak truth to power this is the time brothers and sisters we are not going to back down we are not going to watch our countries being destroyed and our continent thank you so much for watching uh, this video i hope it is of good importance to you thank you so much